with all of that, um, last night I acknowledged Visit Lex as an organization that represents Lexington in an in a incredible way. I'm so impressed by the entire Visit Lex team and what they've done. They've been great partners. But I also recently had the great pleasure of meeting Mayor Linda Gorton. Um, and I have to tell you, she's one of those individuals that you meet her and you say, if, if we had more mayors like Mayor Gordon all around the world and all around the United States, I think, uh, I think our communities would be better and stronger than they are today. So I'm so uh, glad uh, to use this moment to introduce to you all Mayor Linda Gorton of Lexington, Kentucky. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lexington. And we are so happy that you are here with us. And I'm very honored to be able to open up today's Concordia session. I want to thank Concordia's Nicholas Logothetis and Matthew Switt for founding this organization that brings important, innovative conversations to locations all around the world. I especially want to recognize and thank Nate Morris, the chairman and CEO of Rubicon Technologies, which has its headquarters right here in Lexington. And I know that Nate was important in bringing Concordia Summit right to us in the heart of the bluegrass. This summit seeks to explore new and better ways to communicate, ways to end divisiveness, through innovation and technology. Recently, we have all experienced a worldwide pandemic. Some of us, maybe all of us, are still experiencing some of that. Like leaders everywhere, I found myself facing a dangerous enemy with no models, no one with real experience to ask for advice. That's because, of course, there wasn't anyone with experience in this type of pandemic. Those with experience have long passed. From March 2020 until just recently, I have been really too busy trying to stay a step ahead of COVID-19 to appreciate some of the good things it has taught us. Now that I've had time to look back, I can tell you we learned some very important lessons about communication and partnerships that will serve us well into the future. COVID-19 has united us against a common enemy, and in the end, it has made us stronger. Here in Lexington, the pandemic hit home on March 8, 2020. That was the date of our first case involving a Lexington resident. At the time, the one thing I did have going for me was nursing. I'm a registered nurse. I understood the dangers that could come with a pandemic. Before COVID-19 came to town, I had already reached out to our sizable healthcare community to form a stakeholder group. There were naysayers who thought I was crazy to get ready for something that wasn't even here something that would only last a week or two. Oh yes, I heard it all. Our healthcare sector, like any healthcare sector, is very competitive. Asking its members to work together was something very new. We brought together administrators, doctors, nurses from all of our hospitals, our major clinics, our healthcare providers. We worked together to ensure we had all our bases covered, that everyone had the supplies they needed, all the healthcare needs of our citizens were met, and on and on. Two years later, this group continues to meet and discuss the pandemic and how they are handling the impact on their facilities. We also continue to discuss best practices one thing about a pandemic, it's an opponent that changes every single day. Once we got the healthcare stakeholder group up and running, it took no time for another issue to emerge. The impact on our economy, which we have all felt. 
all economic activity slowed in the early months of 2020. Our city revenues plunged. People were losing their jobs and were in danger of losing their homes. So once again, we turned to our partnerships. We formed a business stakeholder group right here in Lexington, bringing together competitors to work collaboratively on new ideas to protect vulnerable businesses, like restaurants and other small businesses. Business helped us craft our rescue plan, and the city launched a small business loan program. We also established a rental assistance program and ultimately received state and federal funding to keep people in their homes and keep their utilities paid. Our program won national recognition from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Treasury Department for having ideal best practices that could be used nationwide. Communication and technology have been key through all of this. We had to keep our citizens updated daily on how to protect themselves, where to get tested, how to get vaccines, how to get rental or business assistance. We have been successful because of our partnerships. Lexington currently leads the state of Kentucky in the number of people who are vaccinated, well over 70%, because of a dogged communication campaign called Let's Do This. Door-to-door -door canvassing. I actually hit the streets to do some of that and a mobile testing and vaccine clinic to get testing and vaccines to underserved neighborhoods. We were recognized by the White House for our innovative vaccine campaign, gained local, state, and national attention for our testing program. It has been difficult. Once in a century event, I hope. Even so, here in Lexington, by working together our local government and residents have risen to the occasion, formed important, worthwhile partnerships, and put this crisis behind us. Good leadership requires working together and lots of communication. A second issue we faced in 2020 reinforced that message. In 2020, Lexington was one of many American cities that experienced racial protests. <clears throat> we had 59 straight days of protest right here on our downtown streets. Our protests were peaceful and they served as an eye-opening moment to focus our attention on the need to address racial inequities that were decades in the making so another partnership was formed. I established the Mayor's Commission on Racial Justice and Equality, and it produced a report with significant recommendations for change. Today, we are making good progress on implementing these recommendations to disrupt racism in our own community. For example, like many American cities, Lexington has experienced increasing violence on its streets, often involving our young people. The commission led us to expand a program designed to combat this violence. We call it One Lexington. Bishop Desmond Tutu once said, we need to stop pulling people out of the river. We need to go upstream and figure out why they're falling in. That's the goal of One Lexington, which relies on partnerships among volunteers and nonprofit agencies to reach out to our youth. As you hold your conversations today, know that what you discuss goes well beyond the stage and these walls. The shared ideas, concerns, and opportunities can be taken into each of our communities to make the lives of everyone better. We can all build long-term partnerships that lead simple conversations into transformative, positive action.
Later today, you'll be hearing from Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir Through weekly phone calls throughout the entire pandemic, we developed a great partnership to make sure that Lexington and the state were working together. You will also hear from Congressman John Yarmouth and former U.S. Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chow. This summit offers these great opportunities to hear from outstanding leaders. I hope you've enjoyed your time in our beautiful city and that you have an opportunity to visit what makes us special, a lively urban core surrounded by world-class horse farms and a strong agricultural industry. If you have time, visit Keeneland, our world-renowned historic race course where you can experience thoroughbred racing at its best. Visit some of our outstanding local restaurants, breweries, and distilleries, which some of you may have already done, or listen to some live music and enjoy our local arts community. And please come visit us again. Thank you so much for all all of you do.